in three, two, and one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Julie's Kids Trivia Show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend, even if that weekend didn't include some of the things that you're really, really used to and that you really, really might miss or if it included things that you just don't normally do. I hope it was wonderful. Hey, it's pajamas day, so I'm in my pajamas. This is Uncle Julie wears back. He likes to keep the warm, the room cold and wear a nice sweatshirt. I hope that you wore your jammies too. And if not, I hope that you're comfy anyway. I'm Uncle Julie, everybody. If I don't know you and you don't know me, my real name is Julio. It's an Italian name, but my niece and nephews call me Uncle Julie, and you can too. I'm coming to you live each weekday during this special time, just so that we can both have something fun. Whoa, everything's beeping. <laughs> so we can have something fun in our day. All right, quick note. You can share the show right now with your friends and family if you hit share or watch party. I'd love it, and we can get everybody involved. All right, Lissardo da Vinci is here. You know my pet lizard. Ciao, tutti. Come stai? That means, how are you? You can say, bene, bene. I'm good. Today, Lissardo is going to teach us the phrase for, do you speak Italian? Do you speak Italian? <laughs> Lissardo, do you speak Italian? Si, si, o Julie. Okay, you want to teach everyone how to say that? Si. Okay, everybody. This is how you say, do you speak Italian? Parla Italiano. Parla Italiano. It's a question for you, everybody. Parla Italiano. I'll show it to you so you can see it on a piece of paper. It looks like this. Parla Italiano. Say it with me. Parla Italiano. Yes, it's actually the longest phrase we've ever done on the show. But we'll repeat it and repeat it so that you can hear it and see it. And maybe you'll get to know exactly how it's said. All right, everybody. Lisardo is here. I've got my lemonade on a Monday. Mm -mm -mm. Let's start our show off the way that we always do. Hands on your tummy. Deep breath. Eyes closed. All right, Nico, if you're watching, hey, ciao, Nico. I wasn't sleeping. I was just taking a deep breath. Nikki, if you're watching, I hope you took a nice deep breath today. I hear it hasn't been the best day or the best weekend ever, but I want you to take a deep breath. It's all going to be okay. All right, my friends, let's see who's here. Oh, so many fun people on my board. Hey, Nick Anthony. Oh, hello. The Carbonettos are here. That means John Luca and Isabella are here. Welcome back to the show. Uncle Joseph is here. Oh, Marina has her dog PJs on. I love that. I want to see a picture. That's right. Dan Bear is here. Hello, sir. Welcome to the show. It's Pajamas Day and Uncle Julie's Kids Trivia Show. So if you don't have your pajamas on, totally cool. But if you still do, even cooler. All right, David Gamboa, hello, hello. Sage is in the house. I see the Alexanders. I see Nunu and Orly in Brooklyn. Welcome back to the show. I see Babushka Malushka, hello. All right, everybody. Let's make some lemonade, people. To the trivia board we go. If you're joining us for the first time, we do five trivia questions for ages four, five, six, seven, eight, give or take one or two years. And then we move on at 615 Eastern for trivia for ages nine and above and their families. And every Friday night, I do a special Uncle Julie's Kids trivia show, but for adults at 930 Eastern. I hope you can join us. Okay, my friends, here we go. Oh, I'm so excited today. I really missed you guys and I missed doing this. Here we go. Question one, tired people need what? You have to know the meaning of the word tired. I think you all do. All right, juniors, these questions are for you. 15 seconds on the clock. Tired people need what? Friends, sleep, food, or comfort. Hmm, what do tired people need? I'll give you a chance to write down the answer or plug it into YouTube or Facebook. Remember how we work here. I want to make sure that you commit to an answer. It can be right or wrong, but I want you to make a choice. 
write it down or plug it in so that I know you have committed. All right, my friend, 15 seconds are up. You are hearing New York City in the background because I decided to keep the window open today. So there you go. Here we go, my friends. Tired people need what? Bing, sleep. That's right. If someone is tired, they might feel exhausted and they might need sleep. I totally agree. They also need coffee. All right, question two, my friends. What color is grass usually? Now, grass can be many colors depending on how much sunlight has hit it. But usually, what color is grass, boys and girls? Is it green, blue, yellow, or red? I'll put 15 seconds on the clock and I'll have my trusty phone count us down while I go over to YouTube and say hello. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. So great to have you here. All right, my friends. Jacob has his robot PJs on. Jacob, that's awesome. If, if your mom and dad think it's okay and give you permission, send me a pic. You can send it on Facebook or to my email, hiuncljulie at gmail.com. Now, remember, everybody, you should never send a picture of yourself to anyone on the internet unless your parents say that it's okay. You and I are friends for sure, but if you don't know me in real life, then you shouldn't yet trust me until your parents say that it's okay. Got it? Good. All right, friends, green, grass is usually green. All right, yay, green. Here we go. Question number three. Question three, what is the opposite of dark? That's right, what's the opposite of dark? Is it best, heavy, out, or light? Here we go, 15 seconds are on the clock. Make sure you stretch your fingers and plug it into YouTube or into Fachi Book. My grandfather used to call it Fachi Book, so I call it Fachi Book. Or write it down on a piece of paper. Either way, what do you got? Okay, friends, what's the opposite of dark? I'll go to the answer board and see what we've got. Cindy Agarduso, welcome to the show. Kim Avis, welcome to the show. The Santangelos, Nikki, Anthony, and JoJo are in the house. So is my cousin Arlene Taratona. Great to have you all here. Okay, friends, what's the opposite of dark? If you said D, light, you get one point. Great, question four. This is a new question on Uncle Julie's Kids Trivia Show. It's called the word fill-in. That's right, I don't give you four options for the answers. Instead, I give you a clue, and then I show you one letter with the remainder of the letters in the word blank spaces. And you've got to fill it in. Let's see if you can get the first one. And then we're going to have one like this every day this week. All right, the clue is a small insect that you find in a garden. There you go, it's three letters. The first letter is A, a small insect that you find in a garden. All right, you got 15 seconds on the clock. You can write it down or you can plug it into YouTube. Oh, fuck you, bug. Elvis Lee Sardard, though. Hello, my friend. Elvis, I want you to know that this is Lee Sardo also. Ciao, Elvis. All right, Elvis is a very good friend of mine. His last name is Lee Sardo, and my lizard's first name is Lee Sardo. What? All right, friends, that's right, a small insect that you usually find in the garden. What do you got? What do you got? Let's check the boards. That's right. If you said ant, you are correct. Do you like the word fill in? I think it's going to be a staple here on the show. I think every day, this week at least, we'll have a new word fill in. It's kind of fun. All right. Whoa, that's an ant. <laughs> Hope you don't got ants in your pants. Question five, everybody. Here we go. What kind of animal is this thing? Oh, it looks so cute. What kind of animal is that, boys and girls? Is it a hamster, a lion, a flamingo? or a caterpillar. Take a good look. Is that a hamster, a flamingo, a lion, or a caterpillar? Choose A, B, C, or D. Write it down or plug it in and let me know what you think. And I'll let you know if it's right or wrong. Okay, my friends, let's see. You like filling, yay. Hey, Trevor Blake, welcome to the show. Now, this is May, 2020. This would have been Trevor and my 20th college reunion. And so if anyone's watching who was with us in school 20 years ago, I raise my glass to you. 
some really important things have been canceled this year, but we can't let that get us down. No, we have to find ways to celebrate with the people we love anyway. Crazy. All right, my friends, what was that? Hamster lion, flamingo, or caterpillar? Oh, no, hamster, that's right. The answer is hamster. If you said hamster, you get one point. This is a lion. This is a flamingo. And this is a caterpillar. Extra bonus point. If you can tell me what a cat caterpillar becomes after it comes out of its cocoon. Oh, first one gets one point. Let's see. Anybody, anybody? Robert Moore, welcome to the show. All right. It becomes a butterfly. All right. But the answer that, to that question was hamster. So if you got hamster, you got a point. Friends, that's great. That's trivia for ages four, five, six, seven, and eight today. If you got five out of five, let me know. Or four out of five, three out of five, two out of five, one out of five, or maybe you didn't get any of them. Hey, what's my rule? That's right. I'll be back tomorrow and every day this week. And we're going to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying to get five out of five. That's how this works. That's how you become really, really good at something. You just keep trying. Okay, friends, let's see. I want to tell you what's coming up on Uncle Julie's Kids Trivia Show for the rest of the week so that you can be prepared. Today is Pajamas Day. These are my pajamas. These are my sweatpants and my sweatshirt. Tomorrow is Fun T-Shirt Day. That's right. I want you to wear the T-shirt that you love the most, that is the most fun to you, and I'll do the same thing. Wednesday, we have a very special guest who called me this morning with a very special riddle. So I can't wait for you to meet him. He'll be on the show on Wednesday with his riddle. Thursday is our Home Together Pal segment. That's right. If you got a picture of you with crazy hair or funky socks or in pajamas or in your fun t-shirt, send it over. And Friday is our special Masks Day. That's right. I think that we've all gotten a little bit more used to seeing people with masks and so on Friday, if you have a special mask that you've been wearing, you can wear it or bring it to the show, and I'll wear mine or bring mine. All right, that's our show for the week. Wasn't that cool? That's going to be a lot of fun. All right, I want to remind you, 9.30 Eastern on Friday is uh, my Uncle Julie's Kids Trivia Show, but for adults. Join us, join us, join us. Before we move forward, we've got our knock-knock joke. That's right, boys and girls, here we go. All right, Mike Rubenfeld, welcome to the show, my friend. Oh, Juliana has her unicorn PJs on. Oh, I can't wait to see a picture of that, Juliana. I bet you are comfy. All right, here's our knock-knock joke for the day. Ready? Knock-knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Lettuce in and you'll find out. <laughs> Uncle Julie cracks himself up. Now, I don't write them, but I find them and I share them with you. That's our knock-knock joke for today. Who's there? No, well, it goes knock-knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Like lettuce that you eat? Lettuce who? Let us in. Like let us in and you'll find out. <laughs> Nikki, did you like that one? Nico, did you like that one? Juliana, did you like that one? Rebecca Rubenfeld, did you like that one? Tell me, tell me, tell me. All right, friends, that's my show for today for our juniors, ages four, five, six, seven, and eight. And now our 615 friends are joining us. And I want to welcome them back to Uncle Julie's Kids Trivia Show. That's right. It's a big, big happy Monday here on the show. Why? Because life is incredible. So are Mondays. It's all about how you think about it. Right? If you think Mondays are terrible, you're going to wake up and have a terrible Monday. But if you think Mondays are wonderful, you're going to wake up and have a wonderful Monday. Oh my God, the power that you have! Happy Monday, everybody! Now, if you're not aware that it's Monday, because you're not aware or you're ignoring the fact that maybe the weekend is over, I have news for you. Public service announcement, it's Monday! That's right, it's Monday. Welcome to Monday. Now, I hope you had a great weekend, and I hope that you have a great week ahead. It is pajamas day, so maybe you're in your jammies like me. If not, I hope you're comfy anyway. Remember, send me a pic of your jammies. You can always send it to me over Facebook or on my email, hiuncleJulie at gmail.com. 
If I don't know you and you don't know me, I'm Uncle Julie. That's right, my real name is Julio. It's an Italian name, but my niece and nephews call me Uncle Julie, and you can too. And I'm coming to you live each weekday during what seems to be a very special, odd, weird, sometimes even uncomfortable time in our lives. And I'm doing it so that we can spend some time together and we can have some fun on our calendars every day. That's right. All right, kids, Lissardo da Vinci is here. I report for duty, zio Julie. Ciao, tutti. Now, earlier, if you've been here since six, he taught us a phrase, which is, do you speak Italian? It sounds like this. Parla italiano. Parla italiano. Everybody say it with me. Parla italiano. All right, boys and girls, everybody, young and old, this is what it looks like. Parla italiano. That means, do you speak Italian? Actually, a phrase that might be even more useful if you meet an Italian speaker is parla inglese. Do you speak English? And maybe between the two of you, you can figure out how to communicate. All right, friends, that's Lisardo. I've got my lemonade, as I always do, because that's what we're doing here, making lemonade out of one big, oh my God, it's May 11. Here we go, boys and girls. All right, friends, Rob Snyder, welcome to the house. Hello, welcome to the show. Okay, folks, let's jump in. This is episode 32, what? Social distancing day 51. It's been 51 days since we've been within six feet of each other. And homeschool day 35. I raise my lemonade to you, homeschool students and homeschool teachers. It's been really not easy, I'm sure. But I think you're doing a fantastic job. Mm-mm-mm. Homemade lemonade is so much better than a store-bought. All right, everybody, here we go. The riddle from yesterday, uh, or from Friday. I have lots of flavor and have many layers, but if you get too close, I'll make you cry. Mm, what am I? Do we have any answers up on the answer board? Anybody, anybody, David Otero, welcome to the party. All right, if you said many layers makes you cry, an onion. That's right. If you said onion, you got the riddle. Well done. Here we go, my friends. Ten trivia questions. We're going to start right now. You get to put down any answer you want, A, B, C, or D. You can write it down or plug it into YouTube or into Facebook. We're playing on the honor system. So I honor you. You honor me. And you write down and score yourself only for the correct points. Here we go. Question one. What is the name of this famous landmark? Take a look at it, my friends. You're going to have 10 seconds on the clock. Here are your options. Is that the Great Wall of China, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Mount Rushmore, or the Pyramids? Take a look at it. Is that the Great Wall of China, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Mount Rushmore, or the Pyramids? Now, what does the word landmark mean? Joseph, I hope you know this. Landmark is an enormous structure somewhere in the world that tells you exactly where you are. So landmarks can be buildings, they can be special towers, they can be all sorts of things that are historical and determine and tell you exactly where you're at. Okay, friends, Scott Gawkin and Dana in the house, hello. That's right, this is the Great Wall of China. Now let's take a look at the other ones so you can see them. This is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Whoa, it's leaning. <laughs> and it never falls down. Amazing. This is Mount Rushmore. That's right. Four presidents' faces right there carved right into the stone. And the pyramids. The pyramids are in Egypt. That's right. And they are the burial grounds for some very important members of Egyptian society. So we're going to learn about all these this week. I would commit them to memory. Wink, wink. Here we go, my friends. Question two is our animal question. That's right. Who remembers the song? Animal, animal, animals, animal, animal, animals, animal, animal, animals. I still don't have a final beat, but I'm liking it more and more. Here we go, my friends. Our animal question today. Where's my cursor? Welcome to my homemade TV show. What kind of animal is this? Bing. Whoa, what a cute little animal that is. Do you know what that is, everybody? Take a look at your choices. Is that a chameleon, a crocodile, a gecko, or an iguana? 
some very rare and very cool animals on our list this week. Is that a chameleon, a crocodile, a gecko, or an iguana? I'll give you 10 seconds on the clock. Think about it in your brain. Use your process of elimination if you know what any of those look like and determine if this looks like the image in your head. So now, since these are your friends, Lisardo, do you want to answer? Sure, I do it for you. This, my friends, is no lizard. This, my friends, is a gecko. That's right. This is a gecko. Check it out. If you said gecko, you get a point. Now, that is a chameleon. It's multicolored and changes colors. That is a crocodile, super long, a lot of them in Florida. And that is an iguana. They look similar, so I want you to learn them all. Take a look. This is a gecko. Probably looks the least similar to the rest. This is a chameleon. This is a crocodile. And this is an iguana. The correct address was gecko. So if you said gecko, you get one point. Civics question, question three. That's right, every day I take a question from the American Citizenship Test. Here's today's. Which U.S. territory is in the Western Pacific Ocean? Now, boys and girls, the U.S. has 50 states, but it also has five main territories. Territories are lands and places that the U.S. government owns, but they are not actually states. So which U.S. territory is in the Western Pacific Ocean? That's kind of like between Hawaii and Asia. All right, is it Puerto Rico, Guam, the U.S. Virgin Islands, or Alaska? Ten seconds are on the clock, my friends. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two, and one. Amazing that that lines up time-wise. Okay, everybody. Oh, Matt Magulian, welcome to the show. That's right. Marina says the gecko is from Geico. Well, Geckos were around way longer than Geico, but yes, you are correct. <laughs> All right, my friends, which U.S. territory, that means it's not a state, is located in the Western Pacific Ocean? That's around between Hawaii and Asia. Well, let's think about it. Alaska is a state, so it's not a territory anymore. The U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico are in the Caribbean off of the East Coast and South of the United States or the continental United States. And Guam is the answer. That's right. Take a look at where Guam is. This is the continental United States. That's right. 48 states. This is Alaska. That's Hawaii. And all the way west is a U.S. territory called Guam. G U. A.M. Now, if you didn't get it correct, maybe you learned it. And that's all that matters. All right, my friends. Here we go. Question number four is our sports question. Where are my athletes at? Let's see what it is. Here we go. Which of the following famous athletes is a top player in golf? Take a look. Is it Usain Bolt, Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, or Roger Federer? Ten seconds are on the clock. Each of these gentlemen plays a different sport. Which one is a master or a top player at golf? Bam, bam, bang, 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 Lemonade. No, lemonade's not the answer. Tiger Woods is the answer. That is correct. If you said Tiger Woods, you get a point. Question five is our science question. Very interesting today. Take a look. Which is the invisible force? that pulls everything towards the Earth's center. There's an invisible force pulling everything into the center of the Earth. What is it? Now, take a look. Hello, Joanna, welcome to the show. Is it magnetism, gravity, balance, or floating? Think about it carefully and deeply, my friends. What invisible force pulls everything on Earth toward the center of the earth. Now, what you see is that it pulls everything to the ground. Is it magnetism, gravity, balance, or floating? What do you got, my friends? What do you got? What, what do you got? What do you got, my friends? What do you got? What do you got? Hey, what do you got, my friends? The answer is, thing, gravity. That's right. 
Magnetism is the force that pulls things together. Balance is making sure that you have equal footing and you don't tip over. And floating is what happens when you throw something into water and it pops up and stays there. Hmm. There you go. You learned something today. Question six is our parent question. That's right. If your parents are not with you, tell them to come on over and join us for a little bit of fun. It's a question <clears throat> related to music, and it's usually not from modern times. So like, like current times, not like modern times. Like we're all pretty modern. Okay. Now, uh, if your parent is next to you or right next to you uh, helping you out with these questions, the answer probably lies with them. Here we go, my friends. Which famous band released the song Summer in the City in 1966? It sounds like this. All right, Hot Town, Summer in the City. I chose this song today because I have the sneaking suspicion I will be spending the summer in the city and it's going to be a hot town. Okay, my friends, what do you got? Do you know who sang it, who released it? Anybody, anybody? Hmm, let's see. Not Foreigner. Actually, the band that released this song was called The Lovin' Spoonful. Hmm. Never heard of them again. <laughs> the Lovin' Spoonful released that song in 1966. Anybody get it? It was a pretty hard one today. If you got it, let me know in the comments and I will celebrate you. All right, my friends, moving forward. That's right, here we go. Question seven, body math, body math, body math, body math. Here we go, all you need is a body and a general understanding of mathematics. Here we go. You only get 10 seconds, so get your brain ready and go. The number of figures you have, not counting your thumbs, plus the number of thumbs you have, plus the number of toes you have, plus the number of elbows you have, plus the number of armpits. 10 seconds are on the clock, my friends. The number of fingers you have, not counting the thumbs, the number of thumbs you have, the number of toes you have, plus the number of elbows you have, plus the number of armpits. What you got? Fingers, no thumbs, plus thumbs, plus toes, plus elbows, plus armpits. Whoa, that's a lot, Uncle Julie. 24. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Body math. What do we got, my friends? Let's take a look at it. Oh, the Carbonettos always delivering. Nice. Ah, that's right. Here we go. Take a look at it. Ah, number of fingers you have without thumbs is eight. That's right. Remember a few weeks ago we learned that these are called fingers. And that's your thumb, so they are all called digits. I learned that too, right here on the show, in front of you. The number of thumbs you have, two. The number of toes you have, 10. 10, 11, 12, plus 8 is 20. Number of elbows, two. Armpits, two. That makes it 24. Okie doke, my friend. Here we go. Question number eight's our movie mix-up. That's right, here's our Hollywood question. That's right, I give you the plot of a movie, the story, and I substitute out, tricky, tricky, the name of the main characters, and you've got to identify the movie. Now, this one's a little bit older. It might be a little bit harder, so you can rely on your parents to help you out. Here we go. Based on the story of the Brady Bunch singers, this movie is about a young Austrian woman named Jan. Jan is sent to the villa of a retired naval officer and widower to be a governess to his seven children. Seven children. After bringing love and music, love and music, love and music into their lives and into the family, she marries the officer and together with the children finds a way to survive the loss of their homeland. Now, it's a classic movie and one that I highly recommend if you are homebound, we all are, and are looking for a great family movie. Do you know what it is? I'll give you 10 seconds on the clock. Remember, the name of the characters are switched out and replaced, but the story is the same. 10 seconds. Let's see what you got, my friends. That's right. 
Point to you if you said the sound of music. It's about the Van Traps. They are awesome, and it's a really great movie. Okay, friends, question nine, Mrs. Crane's vocabulary question every night. I take a look at a new word to make sure that you know it, and then you can incorporate it into your vocabulary. Here we go. What does the word banquet mean? Banquet. What does the word banquet mean? The hills are alive with the sound of music. Yes, mother. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Okay. An elaborate meal or party. Done or being uh, done or being alone, extremely large or unreasonable or silly. What does the word banquet mean? I'll give you the options. There you go. The word is banquet. Do you know the definition? Take a look. You get ten seconds on the clock. And three and two. We're counting down. And one. If you said a an elaborate an elaborate Uncle Julie, wake up. It's Monday. An elaborate meal or party, you are correct. Here we go, question 10. What kind of machine is this? All week we're gonna take a look at simple and not so simple machines. Here we go, what kind of machine is this? Take a good hard look at it. If you don't know, you can always ask your parents. 10 seconds on the clock. Is that a lever, a pulley, a sewing machine, or a letter press? Is it a lever, a pulley, a sewing machine, or a letter press? What do you think it is? Anybody, anybody, anybody? Nikki, Jojo, Anthony, you got any answers here? Let's see. That's right. It is a sewing machine. Now, I want to show you some other machines and explain maybe why they are machines. That's a lever. That's right. You would call this a machine. But it doesn't look mechanical, Uncle Julie. It doesn't look highly technological, Uncle Julie. No, it's actually what we call a simple machine, which really just means you can use it to accomplish something, meaning work. You can move a very large object with a lever. This is a machine, a simple machine called a pulley. That's right, by putting string or a rope through a wheel and around a wheel, you can actually lift something heavy. And this is a machine called the letter press, which is a more complex machine. But before computers, we used to use letter press as a way to print printed materials. So if you printed a newspaper, or now you can print some fancy invitations, it's called letter press. These are really cool machines, and I hope you get to know what they are. All right, friends. That's our 10 out of 10. What do you got, my friends? Did you get 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10? Which, which, which? How many did you get correct? Remember, the rules are the same as just with the juniors as it is for you guys. Tomorrow is always another day. That's the best part of life. If you didn't get what you wanted today, if you didn't accomplish what you wanted today, if you don't feel great today, all of the above, tomorrow is another day. That's the hope and the promise of tomorrow. Okay, my friends, let's take a look at this week's awesome woman. Actually, tonight's awesome woman. Every day I high profile an awesome woman on the show. Now, it used to be a trivia question, remember, in the beginning weeks of the show? And then I decided, you know what? It's much better if I just introduce you to an awesome woman who you may not know from our history. Take a look at tonight's awesome woman. This is Katherine Johnson. Now, who is Katherine Johnson? Katherine Johnson was an American mathematician whose calculations of orbital mechanics as a NASA employee were critical to the success of the first and subsequent U.S. crewed space flights into space. During her 35-year career at NASA, uh, she earned a reputation for mastering complex mathematical calculations, and she helped to pioneer, that means she was a leader, the use of computers to perform tasks. Now, NASA noted her as having a historic role as one of the first African-American women to work as a NASA scientist. Now, Katherine Johnson is awesome, and if you've ever seen the movie Hidden Figures, it's based on her work at NASA. I raise my lemonade to Katherine Johnson here, here. Now, Katherine Johnson said something really cool that I want to share with you. That's tonight's quote. Math, it's just there. 
You're either right or you're wrong. That's what I like about it. Well, that's tonight's Think About. I want you to think about the think about. Talk about it over dinner or maybe think about it before you go to bed. What are the subjects in the world and in school that you like the most? Which do you really look forward to during your school day? Which do you know very well? Which would you like to know even better? Those are the things I want you to think about tonight. Which are the subjects in school that you love? Now, you don't have to love all of them, and you can't say recess and lunch. Which ones do you love? I don't know. You tell me. Okay, friends. Tonight, we thank the cleaners. That's right. There are hundreds and thousands of people throughout this country who are cleaning subway stations and park benches and public spaces to make sure that you and I are safe. So tonight, I raise my lemonade to them, and we say thank you. Here's the riddle for tomorrow. What is always in front of you but can't be seen? What is always in front of you and can't be seen? I don't know. Don't call me with it. Don't Facebook me. Don't text me. Come back to the show tomorrow, and we'll take a look at that riddle. Lastly, my friends, I'm at UncleJulie.tv. You know that. Pass it along and spread some love today. That's right. We have learned during this special time that we can spread anything. We may as well spread love. And lemonade. I love you, everybody. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow is fun t-shirt day. Ciao.